300 blackout versus 308. We're talking 30 caliber cartridges today here on the Ammunition Guides podcast. Hello, friends and lovers. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. Chris, I've been drinking green tea all day. I'm hopped up, and I want to compare two very (laughs) incomparable rifle cartridges. Although maybe I'm a little off base because uh, we're going to do 230 cal rounds, despite having very different sizes. Yeah, I mean, I I was feeling pretty squirrely, too, after my green tea this morning. And I thought, yeah, this would be a good topic for us. But, yeah, I mean, the only thing that these two cartridges have in common is that they fire the same diameter bullet. That's about it, to be honest with you. Yeah, the 308 and the 300 blackout. One's a lot older, of course. Yeah, absolutely. And before we dig into it here real quick, I want to just encourage everybody, make sure go down in that link in the description or in the pinned comment. Get on the email list. Get your free $20 off coupon from ammo.com to pick up some of that 308 or 300 blackout that you need to add to your ammunition storage. But yeah, absolutely, Dave. The 308 definitely has quite the military legacy behind it. Uh, You know, being developed after the Korean War, uh, actually a little bit before the Korean War, they were starting to work on it. And uh, really, only saw you know really like frontline use in vietnam and after that they kind of was like yeah we need something a little bit lighter so they went with the 223 but uh you know 308 still in service uh in the military uh both for law enforcement uh, and of course civilian use and very very popular uh cartridge now the 300 blackout to my knowledge has never been used in combat of course you always gotta say that with the caveat that we don't know everything that gets done in combat Mm -hmm. spec ops teams if they wanted to bring their 300 blackout rifles into uh into a war zone i wouldn't tell them otherwise but this is pretty much a recreational round as far as we're concerned definitely i mean you know the the story goes that they uh that spec ops came to you know advanced armament and said that they wanted this 30 caliber cartridge that was like a 762 by 39 but wasn't a 762 by 39 and fit into the m4 platform and basically gave it that intermediate 30 caliber uh you know bullet that you has such spectacular terminal ballistics like we see with the 762 by 39 and yeah, I've heard that oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, I've heard no, it's didn't. it's pretty apples to apples similar as far as external and terminal ballistics. Oh yeah, it's definitely. 76239. Yeah, they really did a good job replicating the ballistics of that and uh, with the 300 blackout, I should say. And it really does the job and, and the beauty with the 300 blackout is you have that mix where you can shoot, you know, subsonic rounds, you can shoot uh supersonic rounds, it whatever fits your shooting, you know, what you want to do that day out at the range. Uh, and it was actually built to be suppressed, which is one of the things that they wanted. The 300 actually works incredibly well with the suppressor and on a short barreled rifle as well. Yeah, it's got that advantage of being able to see an extremely long, fat bullet. Oh, yeah. Uh, 220 grains being mm-hmm. a subsonic load for the 300 black. Very little propellant, too, as I understand it, like a, like a single digit grainage of propellant. Or am I smoking crack? Uh, on maybe on the subsonic rounds it can be that low, but uh, definitely in your supersonics it'll be in the double digits. I can promise you that much. But it is uh, designed basically to have a complete powder burn within about nine inches of barrel length. Uh, so a really tight, compact package that loves being suppressed, uh, and it really it works better when suppressed, uh, from what I've heard. I've always wanted to build a 300 blackout rifle myself. It's kind of on my wish list here for this year. So we'll see if we can't make that happen. Uh, but not hard to just update no. an existing AR. You just need a new barrel. Yeah, yeah, and that that's the beautiful part about it is it's basically they took the uh, you know the two two three cartridge and they basically widened it out a little bit uh, in the neck so it could accept a thirty caliber bullet. Your standard M four mags will one hundred percent work. All your P mags, anything that you've got that fits in your AR fifteen, will absolutely fit that three hundred blackout. You don't need to update anything except that barrel. I've read that dedicated three hundred blackout mags work a little bit more reliably than. Uh, Two two three five five six mags, but yeah, you can totally get by with whatever kind of mag poles you're currently rocking. I've heard that as well. Uh, I mean, they designed it to fit the original design, but yeah, of course, if you have a purpose-driven design like a an absolute, you know, three hundred blackout mag, it's probably going to be a little bit uh, smoother than just you know retrofitting a a normal 
uh, you know, aluminum mag or a peat mag or whatever you've got uh, to work. But if you're in a pinch and you don't have, uh, you know, the, the money or the wherewithal to be able to get more magazines and you've got this huge stockpile of M4 bags, well, you're, you're in good shape. Um, yeah. I think the important thing to remember with this is to make sure not to mix up your magazines that have, you know, two, two, three, five, five, six in it with uh, 300 blackout. That's definitely a danger. Ah, I've seen quite a few photos of destroyed mm-hmm. rifles. Uh, yep. You know, can't put a 30 cal bullet down a 22 cal barrel. Just doesn't quite work. It's putting, you know, that big round peg into a smaller round peg doesn't work so well. Yeah. Uh, here's one. Here's a question I know you were dying for me to ask. Okay. 300 whisper. Ah, uh, yes. <clears throat> now, that's not 300 blackout, but it also is 300 blackout. It's, I bet you can put it in clearer terms than I could. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So when when the call came out to to make the three hundred blackout, they were looking at the three hundred whisper to do it, but the three hundred whisper is a wildcat cartridge, uh, and it was never standardized by you know uh, Sammy. And so Remington, who eventually purchased Advanced Armament uh, AAC, wanted to use something similar to that, but uh, they d- it just was never standardized. So they decided not to use it and they made a novel design with 300 Blackout. But 300 Whisper is kind of the progenitor uh, for 300 Blackout. It's what they use kind of as a model uh, and they work from there. So does really, you're really fine putting 300 Whisper through your 300 Blackout. Is that, is I've that never generally tr- safe to and say? I, I don't think that we can go on YouTube and say that that's safe to say. Uh, I would need to check on that. That's not something I've looked into too deeply. Uh, and I don't want uh, angry comments or us getting um, you know, lawsuits that somebody blew up the rifle. It should work. Uh, but I cannot recommend that you do it without talking to your gunsmith first. I'd need to double check on that one. Fair enough. If you have angry comments, be sure to uh, tweet them directly at someone else. Absolutely. Or you can leave any comments down below. We love Because, you know, this is a, probably one of the more longer serving rifle cartridges that we have right now in service. Of course, the 30 6 was a bit longer, uh, but uh, 308 really hard hitting round. Uh, you know, comparatively to the 300 Blackout, there really is no comparison. Uh, it's pretty much a night and day uh, type thing as far as the external and internal ballistics are. So, I mean, theoretically, for home defense, like if you lived out in a range and there was a possibility you'd have a threat advancing from 300 yards. There'd be no substitute for the uh, 308. But the 300 blackout seems totally in the running for something you want to use for home defense, especially if it's suppressed. Oh, yeah. This is one of the the big things with the 300 blackout that I would personally want to do. Uh, you know, if I were able, if I had the money and I had the time to, you know, go get my, all my tax stamps to the ATF, uh, all of that taxation. Uh, without representation, that sort of thing, uh, oh, yeah. which we love here. We absolutely love that sort of thing. Uh, oh, the IRS just slit my throat and hung me outside. Oh, yeah. It's so Right around that time, folks. Oh, it definitely is. It definitely is. And, you know, I think, honestly, 300 Blackout really shines uh, when it's in close range. I honestly think those subsonic bullets with a suppressor, on an SBR would be the ideal home defense weapon, if you ask me. Uh, Whereas a 308, you're going to punch through your neighbor's house, your house, and, you know, have that bullet end up somewhere in the next county. Whereas those subsonic rounds on the 300 Blackout are really not going to over-penetrate as much as a full-powered 308 round. But one black eye to 300 blackout always has against it is that its trajectory is so steep. Oh, Nothing yeah. Like the 223s. It really rainbows. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, when do you really start having to take bullet drop into account when you're firing a 300 black? Oh, you mean uh, not after 50 yards? Uh, but. <laughs> It's it's close to that 150, 200 yards where it really starts to drop off really fast. And if we're talking subsonics, then it's not even on, you know, the 20 yard range. Those things fall off incredibly fast. Uh, And it, it really talks about the purpose that the cartridge was built for. And I think that's really what the the comparison here is that we need to kind of get down is what is your intended purpose for the rifle? Because if you've got, you know, a 300 blackout rifle, what are you wanting to do with it? Are you wanting to go, you know, hog hunting or something like that? Or you want something for self-defense? If you're going to get a 308, 
what type of range are we talking about? Do we need all that power uh, behind it? Uh, and if we're looking for something for self-defense, is, is the 308 really the best option? I'd say no. Uh, and I think that's really what this comes down to is just determining what your purpose is for the rifle. And then the cartridge really picks itself. Ah, well, like you often say, overkill is underrated. True. But that's still no reason to uh, implode your eardrums during a home defense scenario with a 308. Definitely. Uh, another 308, we can safely call that a thousand round cartridge. Oh, easy. A thousand yard cartridge if you've got the skill, which I yeah. haven't. Yeah, me neither. Um, with a supersonic 300 blackout, like how far can you realistically expect to reach with that? Oh, probably about 300 yards, I think, is a pretty safe uh, you know, range. And that's basically what they designed the 762 by 39 for. Uh, they yeah. designed it for, you know, to be good to be out to right around that 300 meter mark because they're on the crazy metric system there in Europe. And, uh, you know, that was their, their target. And they hit that with 762 by 39. And I would say, uh, for, you know, combat purposes, that's perfectly fine range for a 300 blackout. Let's hope that we never need to use it for that sort of thing. Uh, but that's where I would be comfortable with a, a supersonic, uh, 300, like I said, subsonic, you need to be kind of at point blank range, to be honest with you. Yeah. Well, if I was in the Army, I'd call it an airstrike for anything farther than 50 yards. Right. I mean, why wouldn't you? If you've got, uh, you know, an unlimited budget, I mean, just call it in. Yeah. Yeah, that's all we need. I'm going to run for president and say we just need an unlimited budget. There we go. Yeah. I like it. Like just win. Just give us that military budget. And we'll take care of the rest. Yeah. You know, so... Uh, I want to appropriate about half of the uh, GDP towards building Dave Island, but that's, that's like for after it. I get elected. I like it. Yeah. That sounds fun. Well, you, you can come, buddy. Okay. Well, sounds good. We can maybe uh, start practicing on that thousand yard range we need to build, right? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Uh, so the 300 blackout, you alluded to this. It's an absolute hog annihilator. Texans mm -hmm. have put this cartridge to really good work down oh, there, yeah. but still a bit small in terms of what you would want for deer. You know, it's actually becoming more and more popular of a deer cartridge. I think for supersonic rounds, you can do it, but you got to be in pretty close. Uh, again, the rule of thumb for deer is about a thousand foot pounds of force. And you've got that only to about a hundred to 150 yards. And that's pushing it with the 300 blackout that you'll have that amount of kinetic energy to really say, yes, I can make a clean ethical shot on a deer. It is becoming more popular. We're actually starting to see it come into some bolt action rifles as well. Uh, but it still doesn't compare to the 308 as far as a deer cartridge is concerned. That 308 is going to not only extend your range, but more than double the kinetic energy, if I'm not mistaken, uh, on the uh, 300 blackout and really can do a number on big game. That's interesting. You say 100 to 150 yards effective range for deer hunting with the 300 black. Cause that's pretty much essentially what the 556 would do. Yeah, if you were allowed to deer hunt with a 556, yeah, you could uh, could do that. Most states don't allow it. I know uh, 20, 243 is the lowest caliber you can do here in Indiana. But if you're in a cool county where you can deer hunt with that low of a caliber, yeah, that would be as far as I would want to uh, ever take a shot with a 223 on a deer ethically. Uh, yeah. And there's a lot of argument behind that as well, using 22 calibers on a deer. I would imagine, yeah, I mean, legality aside, Oh yeah, that, uh, that extra... 0.08 inches of diameter is going to make a huge impact when it oh, comes definitely. to terminal ballistics. Oh, definitely. It, it definitely will. And it's not just that. It's the mass behind it and, and the speed that comes with it. I mean, if you look at the 300 blackout and, and the 308 together, I mean, it's a night and day difference. I mean, the 308 just towers over it for the most part. And even though they're firing the same diameter bullet, it's, you just don't have the propellant behind it like you do with the 308. Uh, and speed kills. Uh, and that's just the truth. Uh, Jack O'Connor said that, and he was right. Uh, and when you're hunting large animals like that, you want to make sure you've got enough speed, enough penetration and kinetic energy to do the job done or to get the job done rather, because the last thing you ever want is to wound the poor thing. You need to make a, a clean shot. Yeah. I wanted your take on this. The, the, the 300 blackout, it's a bottlenecked round. Mm -hmm. it's, it's got like the least exaggerated bottleneck I've, I've ever seen. Kind of does, barely, doesn't it? Barely even say it's there. What's the thinking behind that? It's almost a straight case, but not quite. I think it's for feeding, uh, if I'm not mistaken. A again, we're, we're, we were constricted by the magazine design because they basically said, we want to take our standard AR mags, or for the military, of course, they'd say M4s. Uh, they want their M4 mags. They don't want to change anything out. 
Uh, and so that really kind of constricted the designers of the 300 Black out there like, okay, we got to get this 30 caliber cartridge jammed into this magazine that's made for a 223 slash 556. How are we going to do it? And they had to make some sacrifices in some areas. And that tiny little bottleneck is one of them. Doesn't really help you all that much with a, uh, you know, with a clean powder burn. But if with those straight wall cartridges, there can be some extraction issues uh, and feeding issues. And so that it does help a little bit. Obviously, of course, with a 300 blackout, there's really not much there. So I can't really say how much uh, help that's going to be, but maybe just a smidge to kind of help with that reliability. So it's kind of an interesting side effect of having the magazine before you design the cartridge. It really was. They they had the rifle basically, and they said, "Okay, we want to. We've got our M4s. Uh, we're willing to do a barrel change, and that's it. Uh, how can we accomplish this?" And the 300 blackouts, what they came up with. Considering how new the 300 blackout is, it's really become successful in recent years. You know, you can name dozens of rounds that no one's ever heard of. Oh yeah. But uh, American shooters just really embrace this one. That said. Still a little bit more niche or niche, or however I, you pronounce that word. Than yeah, way. absolutely. I agree with you 100% on that, Dave. You know, as far as new cartridges for the AR-15 are concerned, I would rate probably the 300 Blackout as the most successful. You look at like 6.8 SBC, 6.5 Grendel, even like 50 Beowulf. Uh, and things like that, uh, and even the new 224 Valkyrie. And you just don't see the widespread success with those that you have with the blackout. And I think it's because it fills the role that people want. It's like they, you have people, and I know you're a huge fan of the 762 by 39. You have people that love those terminal ballistics for that 762 by 39. And you're like, I just, I want that in my AR-15. And just putting a 762 by 39 in an AR-15 is a bit of a challenge. Uh, because of the taper of the case. That's why you see that strong curvature in the magazines on AK mags. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it just doesn't jive well with the AR-15 platform all that much. You do have some success. Of course, you can buy uppers uh, and, you know, lowers in 7.62 by 39. That's not a problem. I know CMMG makes a fantastic uh, 7.62 by 39 AR-15. It's the the mutant, I believe. And Mm -hmm. it works very well, you know, in that platform. But it's considerably more expensive than your off the rack AR15 in 5.56. Yeah, I love uh 76239 largely because I can get dirt cheap steel case ammo. Oh yeah. But 300 blackout boy, you're going to pay more for that than uh you will. I mean is it even on par with 308? Probably not quite, but you're going to pay more than you would have for 223, no doubt. Oh, definitely. No, you're not going to come anywhere close to 223 slash 556 prices on uh, 300 blackout. I think you're getting pretty close to being one to one, depending on where you buy your ammo. Now, you talk about cheap steel case ammo. There are manufacturers doing steel case 300 blackout now. Uh, last I checked, it's all supersonic. Uh, it's like the 147 grain, mm-hmm. you know off the rack type of steel cased ammo, but you can get cheaper ammo now for uh, 300 blackout It is being picked up by other manufacturers, which is good. Uh, you know, the more ammunition manufacturers we have out there cranking out these rounds, the cheaper it's going to be for all of us. And so, you know, that's definitely a plus, but yeah, I mean, as far as being able to find it everywhere, you're never going to come close to that like you would with a 308 because anywhere that sells ammo, if you, if they have ammo in stock, which is always a question uh you know you should be able to find 308 there and i don't think we're ever going to see the 300 blackout catch up until uh you know the military embraces it i agree and i think that's really the big thing that's been holding it back like you alluded to earlier no one has ever seen any frontline uh you know military pick up the 300 blackout as far as a frontline cartridge now i've heard there are talks about it but no one's actually done it yet and it, maybe it's seen niche combat here and there for spec ops units, but well, we would never hear about that anyway. And if we did, something went horribly, horribly wrong. Uh, but uh, you know, it, it's just it's not as popular in the military. And I think that's really the one thing that drives a lot of cartridges, you know, to the stratosphere as far as success is has anybody picked it up in the military? You look at the two, oh, yeah. the two twenty three five five six, the three oh eight, the nine millimeter. These are just cartridges that are ubiquitous with law enforcement, military, and then civilian use. And it just, it's the trifecta. And until 300 Blackout gets there, I don't think we're going to see the popularity like we do with 308. Yeah. Yeah. Until we have veterans who, you know, fired 800,000 rounds of 300 Blackout, we're yep. just not going to uh, 
it's going to be a commercial market cartridge. Definitely, definitely. But yeah. it, it definitely it's fills a role. 22, that's, that's what the 22 LR is, and it's oh, doing yeah. fine. Maybe oh, yeah. one day. Maybe, maybe. But, you know, it fills the role that people want. And I think that's the important thing. Like you've got your AR-15 and maybe you're just not a fan of 223 or 556. And you know what? That's okay. The beauty of the AR platform is you can pick almost whatever caliber you want. You may have to change your lower if you pick something big like a 308 and go with the AR-10, but you can do it. Uh, and I think that's kind of the beauty of the 300 blackout. What it, it, it answered that question that people were like, I want this. How can I get it? And it just wasn't as simple as slapping a 762 by 39 into an AR-15. The 300 blackout fills that role and it does it very, very well. Cool. So in summary, 300 blackout, uh, home defense, hog hunting, recreational shooting, 308 win, deer hunting, long range recreational shooting and uh, making more noise. I couldn't have said it better myself. Like if you want more noise, yeah, go with the 308. If you want less, go with the 300 blackout. But yeah, I think that's really the the beauty of both of these is like I said, they're purpose driven cartridges. You need to know what your intended purpose is for your rifle and then it picks itself and you can't go wrong with either one and make sure you get all of your ammo here at ammo.com. Thanks yes, for listening. Yes, that's, that's crucial. You have oh, to get your ammo at ammo.com. And make sure you get your coupon code down below, all right? I really appreciate that. And it's completely free. No strings attached. All right, well, we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>